Okay, hey, Teach With Tech friends. I am Craig Badura, K-12 technology coach here in Aurora, Nebraska at Aurora Public Schools. My school is about 1,200 kids, about 120 plus teachers and extra support staff that we have here. So thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm pretty excited to share some of the things that I'm able to do in classes with our teachers and I work with an outstanding group of teachers. So I'm, I'm again, I'm really excited to share some of the things that we're doing in our classrooms. Uh, first of all, I want to give a shout out and thank you to Aaron Flanagan, uh, Julie Smith, and Danielle Knight for putting this on and, and asking me um, six weeks ago or however many weeks ago it was to to help with this. So I'm, I'm truly honored and I hope that if you're watching this, you'll be able to get something out of this. So let's go ahead and start. If you need to contact me here, here uh, is where you can find me on the Twitters and the, and the Instagram. So uh, I always try to share professional stuff on Twitter. You'll see a lot of school stuff once we get going there, but I do share some personal uh, stuff as well, but my more personal side, uh, but I've started sharing a lot more school stuff as well as on the Instagram. So feel free to give me a follow there and then you'll see on the screen there, I have a link to my personal website, craigbadura.com or the website, the digitaldogpound.com that I created as a resource for our teachers. So let's jump right in. Before I guess I get to showing you some of the, the tools that we can create with, I wanna kind of talk to you as a teacher uh, to maybe get you to think a little bit with a couple tools that I love using uh, that I can really use on my phone right here. But I know that teaching with technology can be frustrating sometimes, but what I've learned, I guess one of the most important things that I've learned in my eight years in my uh, role as a technology coach is that the kids in your classroom love teaching each other. So if you would harness the, the energy and enthusiasm and power of a couple of those kids, teach them a couple of things and let them be your little helpers around the room. I know that saved me a lot of time, a lot of headaches and, and uh, relieved a lot of stress because you have a lot of those kids that really love to just jump in. And I think you have some of those kids that may struggle with reading or something else that, that really do a good job of teaching kids with technology or how to use technology. So again, don't be afraid to harness the, the, the energy and enthusiasm of those kids in your classroom. But first of all, I'm going to share some apps today. I know the, the title of my session is Ready, Set, Create. Uh, but I want to talk about the MacGyver apps. And I did a blog post about this because you can probably relate to this. Those MacGyver apps are those apps that are user friendly. Uh, they're only limited by the imagination of what you can do with these apps and you start smashing things together and there's so many things that you can create in your classroom and, and really it never gets old. I think a pick collage, that's one where I think kids could go and create in that all the time. It's such an easy app to use. It's free and there's so many things that you can do that poplet. All these apps that I'm going to show you today, I consider my MacGyver apps and I know that that the uh, the possibilities that that we uh, of creation possibilities in the classroom are endless with what you can do with these in your classroom. So first of all, I'm going to start with Instagram, um, and I uh, I had showed you my username there on there earlier. So feel free to give me a, a follow there, and I'll kind of as the school year gets started, I love to create stories because I think as a teachers share what you guys are doing. You're doing so many good things in your classroom, and so. One of my main ways to share is to create stories. And I love to use Canva, but I'll get into that in a little bit, how I use Canva within my Instagram stories here. But you'll see a story that I have playing right here. I just downloaded this. And so, you know, oftentimes our kids will go home and <clears throat> their parents will ask them, what'd you do in school today? I don't know. So I love to have parents follow me on Instagram because they can really get a glimpse of that window into your classroom. And so this is a great way to promote. And it's okay to promote what you're doing in your classroom because like I said before, you're doing awesome things. So tell the stories in your classroom and share some pictures. Uh, create a classroom account on Instagram. You can toggle back between that and your personal one, however you see fit and want to do that. The next tool that I love to use is Twitter. Um, Twitter, uh, I guess, has been really just, it makes me a better teacher because I'm surrounded by my professional learning network, uh, teachers that are like-minded. They love to share. As you see right here, I have a stream of one of our teachers who started a project called Heroes and Huskies. We take local veterans in our town. She pairs them up with a student in her honors history class, and then they uh, have to create a video production about that veteran and their story and service, and then they culminate that with a trip to DC. And so their hashtag was AHS Heroes 3, which is the third trip. And you can see I'm scrolling through the, the thread right there. And it, so it's really neat to, to be able to share your story. Again, that is searchable. So parents can follow you on Twitter. They could check the hashtag out. It's 24 seven PD on the professional side. Again, tell your story. You guys are doing awesome things in the classroom. So let's talk a little bit about, before I get into the tools, I wanna to give a shout out to Class Intercom. Taylor Siebert here in Nebraska, and Ben Pankin and started Class Intercom. It is a tool that allows 
your kids to run your Twitter account. Now I know you might be thinking, really? So why would I let my kids run my Twitter account? Got to give a shout out to one of my kindergarten teachers, Holly Hudson, right here. Hashtag Hudson Kinders. She utilizes Class Intercom in her kindergarten classroom. So she has Twitter Tuesdays with her kids. And here is a boy in her classroom right here who is using the app Class Intercom. And that basically links our district Twitter account. And you can do Facebook and Instagram if you want to. We just do Twitter. And it links it. So... Uh, you are basically approving posts as they come into you. You can edit them. I'm just going to kind of give you the short synopsis of what Class Intercom is, but it allows us mm -hmm. to teach kids how to craft good content. This generation of, of, of content generation, we like to call them, they love to produce content. And so um, sometimes they don't know how to do very effective content. So this is awesome that Mrs. Hudson's using this, and I'll be using this in my eighth grade digital innovations class issue with your eighth graders, teaching them how to craft good social media content. And they're not going to be putting it on their profiles. They're going to be putting it on our Aurora Huskies account, which it's, it's been a fun experience. And I really look forward to getting back to school to getting started with that. Okay. So the first tool I want to talk about is Canva. I am a Canva addict. It is my absolute favorite tool in the world. I could, I could spend all day on Canva. I've used it with um, some of my stuff with golf, as you can see here on the screen. I like to make little uh, templates. I, I love some of the stuff that Cammy Butterfield makes. And so I thought, how could I actually go in and make something in Canva and let my kids work on that? And so I'm going to show you what I do with Canva. So let's take President's Day, for example. So I went into a blank 8.5 by 11 template I created because you can choose your sizes there in Canva. And it was President's Day. So I thought, I'm just going to make something up here and airdrop it to the kids. So I made it on my laptop and then I airdropped it to each kid's iPad. So we teach our kids how to turn on the airdrop feature uh, when I want to send something to them. And we did this in kindergarten. So you can do this with kindergartners. It's super duper easy. And you only have to teach them about three or four times. And then it's a piece of cake after that. So over here, you can see that I added the little camera icon and the scissors. So the kids know this is, uh, we kind of teach this in succession throughout the year, how to use the camera. We do a whole um, unit or lesson with how to use the camera. We teach them how to use the scissor tools within Pit Collage. So what, what I do is I create it, I airdrop it to them. They go into Pit Collage and they set this as their background. So then they can add text and they can add pictures to this. So the kids know when they see the camera, I have to take a picture of myself and I see the scissors and I have to cut it out around that so it fits in there and they can size it and pinch and zoom it in there so it fits perfectly. And then we can dump that in the seesaw when we're done. You can also see I also had an Easter one we did just for fun. And then uh, during our digital citizenship lessons, we spend quite a bit of time talking about that at our elementary. I made up something here and then we can put some of these in seesaw. Well, we do put them in CSR. We can put some of these in the TV screen that's out in our hallway down by the main office so other kids can check it out. So check out Canva. Uh, Kemi Butterfield does a lot of this stuff, and you can check out her stuff. Uh, uh, one of my favorite follows on Instagram and Twitter. She's doing amazing things in her classroom. So um, think about using Canva to create some templates and airdrop them to your kids. Digital, I hate to use the word worksheets, but I am. But uh, kids really enjoy using those when they can create uh, um, uh, products that you kind of have there and they do it digitally. And don't be afraid here. Uh, kids ask me like the top favorite foods right here. Can we use emojis? Kids love to use emojis. So anytime you can let those kids use those emojis, go ahead and do that. Okay, do ink. Um, I was afraid of do ink at first, I have to confess. Um, I was uh, really afraid of green screen. You know, I opened the app, it didn't seem user friendly. And then uh, fortunately, I was able to meet the developer of Doink probably three years ago at a conference. And she set me aside, took me aside, and take, basically took five minutes and showed me how to use the app. And I'm like, oh my goodness, there are so many possibilities with this. So I believe these are kindergartners from a couple years ago. Uh, they get to meet with their teacher and they do a life lesson book, uh, which is kind of neat. They have a tea party every Thursday. And so what these kids do is every about every fourth lesson we'll go through and we find pictures using the Pixabay app, which is a great place for copyright free images. They tell me what picture they want in regards to whatever the life lesson, whatever they're learning about. I set it as a background and I go down to the dollar store. I take my $1 bill in and I get me a brand new green screen and I go out and hang it up with some scotch tape in the hallway and I just leave it there. And that's our spot to record at the green screen. So check out Do Inc. Uh, there are a ton of different things. Uh, just check on the Twitters. 
I know you might follow some teachers on Instagram as well, but there are just a, a plethora of ideas that are out there about using the green screen in your classroom. And it's very easy. Just jump in and do it. Okay, the next one uh, is Apple Clips. And Apple Clips has changed a lot since last, I kind of can't believe it came out about 18 months ago. And they put an update out about last fall and it became so much more user friendly. I'm really excited to teach this to my primary kids this year because it is uh, such a great digital storytelling tool. And I think it would be fun uh, to have kids use this in a reading class or even at the start of the year is when we're learning about letters and numbers. And so Apple Clips is free. I call it iMovie Lite. It's like a hybrid of that. And you can see a product right here that I created and put together using Apple Clips. So you can add text to it. You can add pictures. You can add videos to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. They can record and do a voiceover. Uh, they can also add music that is in the, the, uh, uh, the playlist that's within the app. So check out Apple Clips. You can simply dump it, save it to the camera roll, dump it in the seesaw again so your parents can see what's going on. You could download it individually. Do whatever you want with Apple Clips right there. Spark video, all the Spark, you have Spark uh, video, Spark post, uh, Spark pages. Uh, there's just some great products out there that you can use in your classroom that are free, and this is one of them. And so I'll use this mainly with our second and third graders, uh, but Spark video is very similar to Apple Clips. Or again, try them both and see which ones you like. They're very easy to use. I do like Spark video because you can use icons. You can add text to that, so you don't have to go out and search for those images online and then bring them back in. So this is all in the app right here. So Spark video is a fun one. As a golf coach, you can see here I'm using it. We use it during old school night. I uh, bring out some old clubs and the kids have to grab an old ball out of there. And so they have to use some old clubs from the 1960s. So I just document this. I downloaded it. I tweeted it out with my, with my Husky Golf account. So another great digital storytelling tool that you can use in your classroom. And it'd be super easy for anybody in K2 to use that. Toontastic. Uh, if you were on the scene three, four years ago, you knew Toontastic had some cost to it. Uh, so Launchpad Toys owned Toontastic and then Google bought it and made it free. Uh, Google gave it a pretty good overhaul at the last year at the start of the school year and really got rid of some of it. It wasn't as robust as it is, but they really pared it down so it's very easy to use. Uh, you have a three-story slide, you have a five-story slide. So those of you that are starting, you know, writing, reading, beginning, middle, end, very easy to create a story this year in first grade. What we had the kids do was we had them use the, the, the blank template background. So they used a blank background and we had them summarize beginning, middle, end, first, next, last, doing their trip to the pumpkin patch. And so we had them actually illustrate their slides. And so they got to go in and use the illustration and they got to add the characters that within Toontastic, but they had to do voiceover. So we broke that down on a sheet of paper. So where the kids actually had to storyboard it out and what they were gonna say, they had to script it out. And then they used the paper and the technology, which it blended very well. So I look forward to doing some more stuff with Toontastic there. So check that out, especially if you have upper elementary kids or even middle school or high school kids, Toontastic has some great creation options with digital storytelling. Uh, iMovie. You know, I was, I was going to leave iMovie out, but iMovie is just a great place when you're app smashing. When you're making things and you can, uh, if you're doing videos, Apple Clips, you could put multiple Apple Clips into iMovie. It's kind of that piece where you thread everything together. As you can see here, I took one of my green screen videos, I threw it in iMovie, I put that real fancy intro right there using Intro Designer Lite, which is free. And then I can go ahead and upload this to my YouTube page, or I could simply download, download it to my iPad and put it in the Seesaw again to share with parents. So iMovie, it's just a great app. I think it's a lot easier to use on your phone or your iPad than it is on your computer. So check out iMovie and use it in your classroom. Super simple for your kids to create with. Seesaw, I don't know what to say. Uh, Seesaw is amazing. Uh, I remember getting an email probably about three years ago from Emily Voigtlander at Seesaw. Uh, at the time, I can't even remember, it was the app called Shadow Puppet. I believe at the time uh, we were using that quite a bit in class for some uh, creation products of digital storytelling. And uh, she had said, check out Seesaw. And I said, if you guys make this happen, this is going to be one of the best apps since in education. I think that's been proven over the last three years. Seesaw, I don't want to <laughs> use the word game changer because 
Wow, but it's it's an amazing tool. If you're not using Seesaw, use it. I've used it for book studies with high school kids. I know some kids will say, oh, it kind of has a kiddie feel to it, but they do such a good job with support and listening to your ideas as educators. So check out Seesaw. Start using it with your kiddos this year, whether you have one iPad in your classroom or your one-to-one. -one. It is an awesome tool to use. Okay, Poplet, you know, that's one of those apps that you kind of have on the third slide of your iPad or the screen of your iPad and you're like, oh, I kind of forgot about it, Poplet. So in the K2 classroom, <clears throat> excuse me, it would be very easy when you're learning letters, sight words, go ahead and have them put a P in the middle and then have them put P words around the outside. Teach them how to use the tool in there. So you can work on some writing as well. You can add some graphics in there. Um, I, I encourage you to take your iPads outside for a walk. Have them take pictures. Kids love taking pictures. And then bring it in somewhere, or excuse me, bring it inside and do some sort of a project where they can add pictures to the popples. And kids, once you teach them Poplet, that's another one of those apps where the MacGyver app, that's where they're going to go back to. Pick collage, Poplet. Oh, can I do this in Poplet? I can work this up. I can do a graphic organizer, uh, you know, with a timeline with your older kids. It's very easy to put a timeline together. Storyboarding. When kids are doing storyboarding, if they're working on a project for their green screen, have them use Poplet to storyboard it out. What they're going to say, have them plot everything out ahead of time using Poplet, which is a super awesome app, and it's free. Book Creator. You know, Book Creator is another one of those that when I was at EdTech Teachers um, Summit a couple years, probably three years ago when I learned how to use the Doink app, I sat on a session to learn how to use Book Creator and it just clicked for me and I was like, wow, this is a super duper good app. Use the free version and I'll share a little trick with you. What we do in ours is we don't pay for the paid version. Sorry, Book Creator, I'm promoting this, but um, if you use the free version, you have to choose which style of book to use. So we usually do the landscape type of book. And so you can create your book, and then what we do is we export it out and dump it right in the Seesaw. So you can do it as a PDF or you can share it as a movie. So it actually plays within um, Seesaw as you upload it in there. Um, if you wanted to do a different type of book, like a tall skinny one, I think there's a square one as well. All we do is we'll simply delete the app, reinstall the free version again, and then you can change the book style right there. Last year, Book Creator came out on the Chromebook. Uh, I believe you can have up to 40, I may be incorrect on that, but up to 40 books in the library that you create. So uh, our fourth and fifth graders used Book Creator quite a bit last year on the Chromebook. So their teacher would create a library, they share the code with them, and the cool thing about that is the teacher can see all the different books that the students are working on. So she's, she or he is kind of like the air traffic controller in the classroom. And they can see that. And the teacher could pop it up on the screen, you know, up on your whiteboard or, or whatever you have in your room and say, oh, this is a really good example here. Uh, and it's, it's really neat because we figured out that you can bind all the books together. So imagine this. You have students all write separate books. You bind them all together. You can print it. And we went down. We have a nice binding machine in our media center and we printed them all in color and all these kids had now had this whatever it was we were studying at the time or learning about the kids it was something with poetry they all have this book of poetry from all their their classmates in their reading class so check out book creator it's another one of those great creation options and our kindergartners use this uh, like i had said earlier <clears throat> for the life lesson so our mrs anderson our kindergarten teacher one of them will do life lessons every thursday they have a tea party and throw kindness around like confetti, be the highlight in somebody's day. And so those kids know the routine. We'll teach them at the start of the year. They use Pixabay. She'll have instructions, specific instructions right up on the board for the kids. And they'll go through. They go to Pixabay to find an image that goes with that. And on the page, they'll have an image. They'll have an illustration. And then they write some text out. They'll actually type the text out. And it's kind of fun going to that classroom after about the third lesson is because they're all just busy bees and they work by themselves. But the best part about it is the student helpers. Like I talked about this at the start, those student helpers love to walk around. So Ms. Anderson and myself were just really kind of sitting back, taking it all in. And these little five and six-year-olds are making their books. And then she will bind those books at the end of the year and give those uh, to each of their kids their life lessons books. So check out Book Creator. Okay, so time for some bonus goodies. I'm done with the creation tools. I'm going to share with you a, a couple of my favorite websites to use. Uh, on Monday morning's first semester, I actually meet with all 100 of our kindergartners. Yes, myself with the 100 kindergartners sitting in front of me. We, we talk about digital citizenship. We have about a 30-minute lesson every Monday. 
And then once we get to Christmas, second semester, we pair it back to every other Monday. So one of my favorite resources to use is right here with NetSmart's kids. This is Clicky right here. Uh, there are great videos, there's resources, there's lesson plans. I do use a lot of Common Sense Media's lesson plans, and so I've kind of developed my own curriculum with the kiddos. But check out NetSmart's kids. There are so many great things, especially their videos. We always try to tie in a video explicitly. It, they're well, really big with the online safety piece. And so Clicky does a great job with his crew of the Webville Outlaws. You'll get a chuckle when you watch some of their videos. So go check it out on NetSmart's kids. You can see some of their videos on YouTube. Can't say enough good things about what they do in regards for resources for digital citizenship. Uh, YouTube kids, I always try to send home using Canva. I create like a, a little uh, four by six card that I'll send home in the, the kids' Friday folders or the mail they take home to their parents. And I always try to share a green app or I try to be transparent with the, the parents and what we're talking about in digital citizenship. So I always try to get apps that are that are good for kids that, uh, you know, uh, try to get them to thinking outside the box. It's not just uh, consuming stuff all the time. But one of those good ones is, is, you know, we always talk to our kids in digital citizenship about YouTube and how many kids go on that. And all of my five-year-olds are going to raise their hand. And so YouTube Kids does a great job of getting rid of all the fluff. And it's just really for kids. And so they've gotten rid of all the, what we call them, red websites. They get rid of that stuff and the language that might come up if kids were watching regular YouTube. So check out um, uh, the YouTube Kids app. Uh, explore. <laughs> This is a great one. So Explore 360, they have live cameras from all over the world. And so if you're doing something with animals, check out their app. Uh, Explore 360 on the web as well. Uh, there is a, a, an, uh, some amazing resources there and they're really great. So if you send them a tweet and you need some resources, you want to ask some questions, they'll get back to you. Really good stuff here. Noisley, do you play music in your classroom a lot? I know I do, um, but sometimes it's just like, what am I going to listen to today? Or the kids will be like, no, we want to listen to this today. So try Noisley. You'll actually see the setup right here. So you have a thunderstorm, you have light, you have thunder, uh, you have wind, some tree sound. You can actually tell it, I want to be productive today. So it will mix something up for you, but you can go in and design your own sounds. And so it's something unique and different in the classroom. So when the kids walk in, you might have a thunderstorm or simply down here, if I would, could scroll down on this a little bit more, there's a coffee shop. So you could actually go in and have some, uh, some that white noise where it sounds like you're in an actual coffee shop. Okay, and my last one today I'm going to share with you is my absolute favorite right now. This is like the wormhole for me. I can jump down this and just spend all day on here, especially when I found some of the Mr. Rogers and the Sesame Street videos. So check out The Kids Should See This on Twitter. Check out their website. Look up at the top right there. There's headings, tech, science, uh, all sorts of different things that are that are kid appropriate videos and so they've screened these and they've put them all in the categories for you so if you're doing something in science on volcanoes go check this out if you're doing something in science on magnets or something like that or space or stars go check out the kids should see this because there are some really super good videos within that so hey thanks for joining me i hope you guys got a lot out of this conference i know i am super excited to actually get in and watch some people's videos if you have questions please feel free to tweet me uh, hit me up on Instagram. I am more than willing to help you. I can Skype with you. I can do a Zoom session with you. I'd love to talk about anything that you guys uh, uh, was new to you in this session. Or if you said, Craig, how do you use Book Creator with these kids? I'd be more than willing to help you out. So hope you enjoy your week and get ready because school's almost here and I know I'm really super excited.